One of the most difficult questions I get is why eucalypts? Why not acacias or banksias or some other group of plants? The colour in some of these smooth bark species really intensifies when they're wet after rain. My name is Dean Nicole. I describe myself as a botanist, an arborist and an ecologist. I was a little bit different as a teenager. Instead of going and kicking the football across in the park, I'd be across in the park planting trees. We're at Currency Creek Arboretum, which is about a one hour's drive south of Adelaide in South Australia. An arboretum is a zoo of trees and this is a specialist eucalypt arboretum. We have about 900 species and subspecies of eucalypts growing here now. Just over 10,000 individual trees, mallees and shrubs. I've found eucalypts to be particularly interesting because there's so much diversity in the group. Over 800 species. And by the time I was about 14 years old, I used to get my parents to take me to any nursery, local nursery around the place and any eucalypt or gum tree with a different label on it, a different name on it. I'd get them to buy it for me and take it back to, they had a few acres in Adelaide, I'd plant it on their property there. My parents actually bought the land because they could see if I kept on planting trees on their property in Adelaide, they wouldn't be able to sell up and retire if all my trees were there. At the time, I just wanted to grow one of everything. I'm very lucky in that I've, I've got parents who could afford to buy a block of land and uh, who could see, I guess, the potential in my interest and my passion in the, in the plants themselves. I do spend a lot of time out in the field. Several times a year, I spend probably two or three weeks in different parts of Australia. I've probably named at least 20 or 30 species of eucalypts, new species, over the last 20 years or so. The idea of gathering all this seed and bringing it back, planting it in the Arboretum here, uh, initially it was just, I was a collector, I wanted to collect everything, but it has huge scientific benefits as well. Yeah, it's a giant experiment, yeah. Most people, when they hear about a gum tree, they think of a, a dirty great big red gum or a big mountain ash things that drop branches and cause bushfires. Uh, but there's a lot more to them than just those sort of species. In fact, over half of all the eucalypts are the, the smaller growing mallee types. This is Eucalyptus tetraptera, one of the 500 odd species of mallee eucalypts. They're the multi-stem type that when they're burnt in a fire, they re-sprout from the mallee root or the ligna tuber at ground level. One of the features of this species is the large, very leathery leaves, almost like a Morton Bay fig, very large and leathery, quite different to most other eucalypts. Its common name, the four-winged mallee, it gets its name from the four wings on the flowers, the buds, the fruits, and also the stems. So we have the pink flowers here, but the whole flower bud actually has that reddish color. It's these sort of small mallee eucalypts that I think would be really good as garden plants because they are smaller growing. They're quite spectacular. One of the things I sometimes get asked is what defines a eucalypt? One of the distinguishing features that's almost unique to the eucalypts is this feature here called the bud cap, which protects the flower. The proper name is the operculum. So if I pull that off like that, you can see the, the flower underneath there. The bud cap or operculum is actually the equivalent of petals in most other plants. So it's just become woody, they're fused together, and they're there to protect the flower rather than be the colourful part of the flower. This is one of the mallee species I often recommend to people to plant in their gardens. It's called the lobe-fruited mallee, Eucalyptus parisiana subspecies lobata. And this is about the maximum size it gets to, covered with these really nice yellowish flowers through the winter and the springtime and it's one of my personal favourites as well. It gets its name of lobe-fruited mallee because of these lobes on the top of the fruit, which is quite a distinctive feature in this species. So it's not just the flowers that are ornamental in this species, it's the leaves, it's the form of the whole plant, but also these unusual woody fruits. These were planted in 1997, and they're getting to the stage of where they're getting quite large and unwieldy, 
uh, and a little bit open. So to rejuvenate them, that just involves cutting them right back to ground level, back to the mallee root or lignotuber. That simulates a wildfire and then they'll sprout back quite vigorously from the mallee root and flower again within 12 months. If I knew a place like this existed when I was in my early teenage years, I would have been bugging my parents to get there as soon as I could and spend as much time there as possible just because of, you know, I wanted to see every species possible. I wanted to learn as much as possible. But I didn't expect I would be the one to create an arboretum like this with so many species. So that's just the way it's turned out and who knows where it'll go into the future.